Welcome to the Gritty Podcast. I'm Brian Call. I've got Brad Hunt here with me. Today's podcast is about my trailer build. So I've got a 16-foot cargo trailer. Uh, I've owned toy haulers and travel trailers and whatnot in the past, but uh, they're expensive. They fall apart, yeah. a lot of them. I, I wanted just something utility, but but and also custom. So I've I've seen a lot of these cargo trailer conversions, been following for a while, these van build types type uh YouTube channels. Yeah, yep. I really enjoy. I owned construction company for better part of a couple of decades. So this is all up my alley. I decided to uh convert my cargo trailer into a type of uh a tr- uh, uh basically a multi-purpose enclosed living quarters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to be able to haul a side by side, but I also really wanted to have warm wood heat. So, hence, I installed a uh, wood stove yep. in this thing. Uh, I've insulated it. I kind of go over the whole build in this episode. So, I, I'm not going to talk about it right here. Catch it in the episode. I think you're going to find it useful if you're interested in a project like this. I'm going to, my brother in law did one that's more akin to an, a, an actual trailer. Mm-hmm. So I'll probably interview him and look at his, his uh, build here soon as well. But for me, it was wood heat, wood heat and versatility. I think you're going to like this podcast. We're, this is a part one of a, of a multi part series. We don't know how many. I'm going to yeah. keep you abreast of the build as we go along. The wood stove has, I mean, I love this thing. It's called the Cubic Mini Wood Stove, the Grizzly Cubic Mini Wood Stove. You can find a link for it down below in the description field. Uh, And if you use that link, um, it helps us. I can't recommend it enough if you're looking for if 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 you're looking for a heat source for a build like this. It does have its pros and its cons. It's kind of one of those things where, like I've said before, running a stove is an art. It's like a skill, uh, just like it is in our teepees yeah. in the back country. Yep. And this stove is no different. It has specific, you know, uh, quirks and things and it can be finicky, can be finicky, but if you know how to use it, it's excellent. Mm-hmm. So we're going to, we're going to cover that stove in the next podcast episode we drop. So this is just, Hey, this is the build. We'll dive deep into the stove on the next so- show. So look for that. And um, right now, this week, we are going to be at the Mm. Western Hunt Expo in Salt Lake City. Come see us there. We'll be at the Peaks booth and the Initial Ascent booth. Both of those, uh, come say hi. We're just kind of hanging out. You got Lampers. You got Livesey. All of us will be there hanging out. Yep. All our friends are going to kind of be hanging out. We'll be podcasting a little here and there, but mostly this year, we're kind of just hanging out there. Mm. Uh, And Bear Tour. Yes, yeah. we got two locations, Missoula, Montana, Boise, Idaho. Registration is still open, so you've got about two weeks to get registered before we kick off the event. Tickets are going pretty quick. So if you're interested in attending our Western Bear Hunting Tour, yep. go to westernbeartour.com. You'll find all the details there. It's basically yep. a multi-day event yep. where we're going to sit there and talk to you about everything we know about bear hunting and entertain you. Yes. It's myself, uh Ryan Lampers, Stealthy Hunter, and Mark Livesey, Brad Hunt. Mm-hmm. It's a group of us. We're going to bring this this uh, seminar to a city near you. There's a couple of locations for now. We hope to grow the event over time, but yep. we're just throwing this out there. So if you're interested, go to westernbeartour.com. Beartour.com. And finally, if you guys are in need of some gear, Don't forget to check out the Go Hunt Gear Shop. Mm -hmm. They got a wide selection of items. When you use the code GRITTY, you get a great discount, and it helps us continue to create content like this. So check it out. Go to the Go Hunt Gear Shop. Use the code GRITTY there. As always, thanks for tuning in. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. If you got questions, drop them there. We try to follow up on all the YouTube comments. Thanks again for tuning in. Stay gritty. All right, folks, welcome to the Gritty Podcast. I am your host, Brian Call, and right now I'm working on a trailer build. Um, It's my little 16-foot, 8-foot wide uh, utility trailer. I use this thing to camp in, but also to haul my side-by-side, all my hunt gear, all that kind of stuff. I don't, I don't, I didn't really want a traditional camper or RV. They're expensive. I beat the crap out of them. 
Uh, toy haulers kind of suck. They're cheaply built. They cost a fortune. So I got a cargo trailer. And um, one of the things, you know, eventually maybe water, toilet, that kind of thing. But really what I wanted was for late season, n n no real difference than my teepee setup. I wanted an enclosed shelter that could um, allow me to have some good solid heat inside, uh, wood stove, uh, comfort, dry out my gear, little fan, you know, to keep things, the air moving, plenty of space to sleep, store my gear, be organized. So with that said, step one, uh, I decided to get this cubic mini, uh, right here. It's the cubic, uh, cubic mini grizzly wood stove. You see this in a lot of van builds, cargo trailer builds where we have this little wood stove that puts out in a crazy amount of heat. It's got a little, sh uh, heat shield that goes around it. I have drilled a hole in the ceiling, uh, added the heat shielding. It has a fresh air intake from the outside that pulls cool, cool air in through a two inch hose out the sidewall underneath the stove. We burn the stove in for like two solid days of fire and wood just to get the stove uh, all hot and heated um, and ready to go. And we installed it. My dad and I yesterday mostly installed it, got the heat shielding up, got the stove pipe put in. It's a little tricky. Wasn't too hard though. Um, I'll probably go into a little more detail later in this video on that. But for now, you can see it was as simple as bolting it to the wall and putting your piping in, your heat shielding in, and uh, getting the roof, a little hole in the roof, throw the throw the uh, pipe on top, glue down your, your stove jack um, to seal it up. And the next step before I finish the install, dad and I are going to insulate the whole thing. So that's what we're doing today. I'm going to put uh, another layer of one inch ply on the floor, give it a little more insulation, but I'm not going to actually insulate the bottom with, uh, with, with something underneath the trailer. I'm going to leave that the way it is, but the walls are all coming off the ceiling. It's coming off. Um, and I'm putting foam and foam board and and spray foam in all the cracks get it all uh sealed up and then i'm going to go ahead and put the sheathing back on and roof sheathing and all of that so the whole thing will be insulated the floor will have basically two inches of ply and uh, reinforcement it'll seal up all the cracks there as well and uh, i'll just kind of film as i go and uh, if you're watching this you'll kind of see how the process unfolds as, as we do it step by step and uh, the wood stove, I'll go into more detail on that here in a little bit too, as we uh, finish up the install later today. It's super easy. The first step that we're doing is we're pulling up the molding along the base of, uh, dad's got it up almost all the way. And then we'll pull off all the molding here in the center, unscrew these boards. They all come off and then we're going to fill the gaps with the foam. And I'll show you what that looks like. So pulling the sheathing off the walls was very easy. Just unscrewed it, came down this, the foam board. We cut it like we would drywall. We just scored it and then, and then uh, split it and then cut the back. We measured it, of course, to fit uh, between the ribs on the trailer, the metal, the metal bracing. It all fit in pretty, pretty easily. And then putting the sheeting back on, just screwed it back into the same holes that it was, that it uh, was originally screwed on with. Now the ceiling itself did not have any uh, sheathing on it from the beginning. It was always an open, open uh, ceiling, which a lot of cargo trailers are. So I bought quarter inch ply. Uh, you can see right here, I've, I've got a piece of it right there taken down so you can see it. And it just curved into place. So I cut the foam and we put it through the ceiling the same as we did on the walls. It curves kind of with the ceiling. And then we 
screwed on the ply, the quarter inch ply. And, uh, you know, you can see it looks pretty nice. And we're, we haven't finished with the trim yet, but it's a nice little ceiling and it's uh, fairly closed in. And then um, what we're going to do is uh, add some trim and I'm going to throw up some barn wood on the side. I've got a whole pile of old barn wood. I've, I'm always looking for old barn wood, collecting it. And I'm going to dry it out and we're going to use that interior to try to make uh, the trailer feel nice and finished, but kind of rugged, kind of like my gritty studios have always been. Uh, I love barn wood, so I'm going to sand it down, you know, try to uh, seal it, stain it a little bit, and put an interior on here that is really cool. The ceiling was not hard to do. I had self-tapping metal screws and a really good drill. And all I had to do was simply hold the board up. You know, the the bracing was about is two inches wide. So I got an inch of the board to the 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 ply to work with, and I would just go straight through and it would hit the hit the metal and tap right in. And uh we screwed the boards up. Piece of cake. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that one with the cane. like a glove. <laughs> yeah. The curve of the trailer right here, easy. We just kind of stuck the foam in there and put a little crease in there. The insulation made all the difference. It's massively warmer in here. Once we did it, it took about half a day to do. I think everybody that if you're going to try to have a cozy warm cargo trailer conversion you got to insulate it what still needs to be done is still need sheathing over the over the curve here still need to finish screwing down a lot of it it's half screwed down and spray foam i got spray foam to hit all little cracks especially the underbelly of the trailer there's areas down around the wheel wells right now where i can see daylight coming through Got to finish that. And then um, again, then it's just sort of trim work inside and however I want it to look with the barn wood and such. So the other thing that we did was install the window. Man, it makes all the difference. It is so nice to have light coming in. Eventually, I want to install a ceiling uh, window or skylight as well as a fan, but I haven't got there yet. But yes, the window install was easy too. It, it didn't take much work. Basically just uh, measured it out and you just cut the hole, pop it in, and then you have your, your trim in the, in the back that uh, you screw on. It was simply a window that I bought from, um, from an RV place and the, it's just an RV window trailer window you can buy those things you can find them around and when you uh install them um they're kind of janky at single pane there were double pane but honestly i don't live in this trailer 24 7 i didn't need it and so far it really hasn't been that big a deal there's some heat lost but there are some little pads that they sell for this window just like it's like a velcro or something you just pop it on and so you can run that thing in at night or whatever when you want it, a little more insulation. But honestly, it's not much different than uh, a toy hauler or any standard trailer. They don't most of those don't come with an insulated window. I can always add another insulated window later if I want to, but for now, I just threw in this hundred dollar, hundred twenty dollar window. No big deal. Cut the outside, frame the inside with wood uh, to reinforce where the where I lost the structural beams um ribbing on the side of the trailer installed the window and uh the whole thing's pretty tight not a big deal and then the other critical thing that i did was i had to install a door 
uh, with a, a door handle, I should say. They make a door that you can buy where you can replace this door. There's lots of places. They'll make a door. You measure it for them and they'll make you like a nice door to fit right there uh, on your hinges and so forth. Or you can buy your own little handle conversion kit, which is what I bought. Uh, you really need a good tool for that, like a grinder or a good metal cutting tool. Now, I just used some drill bits and uh, I rednecked it. I used some <laughs> one inch, some drill bits and I and just did a whole bunch of holes, a little chisel and a sawzall with a metal blade. And uh, I got her in there and then put the wood sheeting back on it. I'd say the door was a lot harder to install that handle than expected. But again, it was really, I didn't have the right tools. On the next episode, I'm going to talk about this cubic mini wood stove, which is part of the trailer build. And uh, we'll go into detail on how it's working, um, my opinions on it. And uh, little hacks for what I've learned for making it really crank and be efficient and handy to use. We'll talk about the eco fan, all that kind of stuff. A little hot water uh, uh, holder on the side. Anyway, we'll get into the Cubic Mini on the next episode. So check that out if you're interested. Leave your comments in the description field below. Let me know uh, what you think. If you got questions about the build, drop them down there. And I'm looking forward. I mean, it's real rough. Right now, it's just getting to the fun stage now. It's cranking a lot of heat with the wood stove. It's fully insulated. It's a nice little haven. Wasn't very expensive to do any of this. Uh, sure, it's heck a lot cheaper than your own, um, your own like toy hauler or some other, other, uh, fully finished, uh, bot system. Really, it was a couple of days of work to do two, two, three days of work to do what we've done so far with the insulation and the stove, not that much money all said and done. And, uh, it's been fun by the time I throw in a, an additional gas furnace, which I want for when I run out of wood or just to have as a backup, by the time I throw in an electrical system with some, um, batteries and solar, uh, I think I'm going to maybe a little running water. Not sure. I'm not sure that I really need to bother when I'm camping and backpacking. I don't have that and uh, pretty used to life without it. So doing a little bit with the bunk bed system because I need it to be modular so I can pull it out, drive my side-by-side -side in and then put it back in place when the side-by-side, -side, when we're at our camping area and we're, when we're setting up, uh, going to have a build in on one side for another bunk and system over there with, uh, my, uh, storage space for, you know, all the battery equipment and stuff like that. The furnace propane. Anyway, we're going to get more into the build as we go and keep you posted. I just want it to feel awesome with, with wood fire heat. And, uh, I want it to be nice and cozy. I want a wood finish inside barn wood. I want to have horns. I want hooks. I, I want it to be uh, both functional and a cool space to hang out in. Probably a traveling podcast studio as well. We get some cool lighting in here. And uh, yeah, but it's just fun. It's just something to do on the side. And uh, so far, thrilled with it. When you pay for or buy something that's already done, it can cost a lot. And I, I, I just like this. It's gritty. So let us know what you think in the comment section. And um, we'll see you on the next podcast. Stay gritty.